great to be with you all this morning and to talk about communion because the practice of breaking bread together is so significant and keeps us coming back to the cross, which is a focal point in our faith. Um, I've got my notes here this morning and I will be relying on them. I was thinking this morning what people might think of that and then I remembered one of the great revivalists who um, used to just stand in front of the congregation, read his notes in a monologue and revival used to break out. So I'm just going to use my notes and you just go ahead and have revival. Um, so I was started by thinking that communion is so important to Jesus that it's the only thing he told his followers to do in remembrance of him. And we'll just look at that in Luke 22. And it's from verse 14 to 19, which says that when the hour came, Jesus and his disciples reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it. And gave it to them saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then Acts 2 describes how communion was high on the priority list of the, of the early church who devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. They were committed to it. They were dedicated to it and considered it as important as teaching, fellowship and prayer. Commentaries say that the breaking of bread began as an appendage to the everyday evening meal. And so we can assume it was probably an everyday occurrence, which finally became a weekly celebration and then part of our Sunday services. The celebration of communion when the family of God meets together is an essential part of our worship and church life. But as we're experiencing at the moment, for practical reasons, it's not always possible for us to meet together but God always wants to meet with us. So, what if we also enjoyed the benefits of communion every day, even when we're on our own? Praise and worship and prayer are all part of our Sunday services, but can also be part of our relationship with God anytime, anywhere during the week. Could it be the same with communion? I see it as being similar to a big family. It's wonderful to get all the children and grandchildren together and share a meal. But then there are also times for the parents to be together on their own, to have a candlelit dinner, um, romantic dinner for two. So it's okay for the communion meal to be shared just with God. It can be a special and intimate time, just you and God together. So my story is that communion came into sharp focus four years ago when I was diagnosed with cancer. And I realized that the only way I was gonna get through it emotionally and spiritually was to stay really close to God. I can't remember where I got the idea from, but I started the practice of taking communion first thing each morning, and it's become a habit. So this is my simple habit. I usually put the kettle on first, um, get a glass, and sometimes I have wine in the house, sometimes it's just water, sometimes bread or just a cracker. And once I've got those, things ready, I stand still for a few moments and focus my attention and thank Jesus for the cross 
and for giving his life for me. If I give it time, I often find one particular thought comes to mind about Jesus' life, his suffering, his death, his resurrection and all the consequences. So I'll think about that and then take the bread and wine. Then I make my coffee and have my quiet time, whatever that might look like for the day. It's a simple practice and can just take a few minutes, but I found it to be an invaluable spiritual practice. The way I have communion is the same each time, and often it just feels like a routine without any special significance. However, it starts the day with focus and purpose, and there are times when it's led to an encounter with God and even been profound. By starting the day with reenacting the significant meal that Jesus shared with his friends, I'm making a deliberate choice to remember the deliberate choice that Jesus made on my behalf. When I was ill and needed healing, taking communion was often about reminding myself and reminding God that we're in covenant together. Sometimes it was like I was saying to him, remember this, the bread and wine, which represents that by your blood, you've overcome every sickness. And it's symbolic of all of your healing promises, which apply to me. Thankfully, that chapter of my life is over, but I've continued with the practice of a daily communion most days because it still helps me. And I say mostly because there are days when I get distracted or, I'm sorry to say, there are days when I need to, I know I need to forgive somebody and that needs to be sorted out first. When we have communion on Sundays, it's usually one small part of the service and then things move on to other, other things. But at home it can be different and we can give more time to it and it can affect um, what we're doing next in the day. For example, it might start a conversation with God that goes on throughout the day. You might be prompted to think of a song or a topic to study or even something specific to pray about. So I've got a few ideas as to how we could extend the significance of communion in our daily, weekly lives. So I tried this yesterday. What if we were to leave the glass of wine and the bread on the kitchen countertop or in the hallway or on, the, on your work desk, somewhere where you'd walk past it multiple times in a day? It could prompt you to be thankful. Remember what Jesus has done to you and be a visual reminder of his presence with you throughout the day. Just catching those glimpses of it um, can just keep bringing us back to focus on him and that he is whatever we need. And if we have a few negative thoughts or a few negative words with somebody, what a challenge, a visual reminder right there um, and a symbol of forgiveness. Um, you could even take communion multiple times in a day. Why not? Another idea could be to end the day with communion. It might even help you sleep better. And how about sometimes taking bread and wine as part of a prayer time for something specific? on your own or with family or friends, to help remember that it's through the blood of Jesus we overcome and have a covenant of promises with him. It seems that there are more ways and more freedom to take the bread and wine than perhaps we've considered in the past. And there are TV shows that say, don't try this at home, but I'm saying, 
do do this at home. So let's take communion together this morning. Some of you will have lots going on around you and not be able to give this your full attention, but that's fine, there's still value in a quick communion. But if you're able, I suggest you get into a comfortable position and take some deep breaths. I'll talk us through this and we'll have a few minutes of silence. You might like to close your eyes some of the time, but if you just have the bread and wine already in front of you. And first of all, we'll thank Jesus for the cross. Let's make this personal and you thank Jesus for suffering on your behalf for taking your place and paying the price for you to have forgiveness. And then consider, is there anything you need to ask God to forgive you for? Or is there anyone else that you need to forgive? Then we'll celebrate Jesus and praise him that he is the victorious King of Kings, who has made it possible for us to be forgiven, healed, set free, and to have the Holy Spirit and eternal life. What is it about Jesus that you'd like to celebrate today? Tell him that now. We have the privilege of being in covenant with Jesus. And all his, of God's promises belong to us. The bread and wine represents your covenant with God. What specific promise from God's word are you depending on today? Can you remind yourself and remind God of that? And following on from that, is there one specific prayer of request that you want to take to the foot of the cross this morning and to leave it there fully confident that you are heard. Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you for this practice of communion to help us remember you and all you are and all you've done for us and for the world. We do this in remembrance of you. And then let's take the bread and the wine and celebrate together.
Thank you all for joining together with me this morning. And I hope you'll make a practice of taking communion at home. God bless. Thank you.